Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide looking at a case of squamous cell carcinoma of the uterine cervix. Uh, let me just orientate us here. So here on the left side, this is the ectocervical lining and coming on to the area of the invasive tumor. And moving on to the right side, this is coming to the endocervical end, so going upwards into the endometrial cavity. And here we have some endocervical glands that are dipping into the stroma, which is a normal finding. Let's have a very quick recap of the stratified squamous epithelium of the normal ectocervix first. So here we can see the normal ectocervix, and this is the basement membrane. We can't really see it, but we can tell that the epithelium is sort of very regimented and forming a line beyond which it does not go. So this is the basal layer of the stratified squamous epithelium, and we can see that as the epithelium moves towards the superficial layers, the nuclei become more flattened, and also the NC ratios are a lot lower because there's a lot more cytoplasm. So we have high NC ratios in the basal layers normally, and low NC ratios in the superficial layers, and this is normal. And this kind of gradation in appearance is known as nuclear polarity. So there is preserved nuclear polarity here. Moving to the abnormal area, at low magnification, we can see that there is clearly a growth that is dipping all the way into the cervical stroma. And it is actually going down quite a long distance from the surface epithelium, which is markedly ulcerated. And this ulceration often explains the presence of significant bleeding in this condition. So looking at the cells that are invading into the stroma, we can see that they form these very large islands of abnormal cells. And the cells have large nuclei. Some of them have fairly low NC ratios. Many of the nuclei have prominent nucleoli, as you can see here. And as we move down again, you can see some prominent nucleoli here. We don't see any uh, definite keratin pearl formation, so this is a non-keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma. And let's move around. And we can also see that right next to these invasive islands of tumour, there is a lot of inflammation. So there are a lot of lymphocytes coming in around the tumour. And here are some areas of necrosis. We can see individual cell apoptosis and there's some keratinization of individual cells here with very orangophilic cytoplasm. There is a very large pleomorphic cell here. And just moving on, we can also see some mitotic figures among the malignant cells. And in some areas, there is a focal suggestion of individual cell keratinization. And at this point, I want to do just a very quick direct comparison with a case of squamous cell carcinoma in situ. This is a case where there is neoplastic change in the squamous epithelium throughout the full thickness of the epithelium. However, the neoplastic cells are still confined by the basement membrane, and we do not see any invasive tongues going into the underlying cervical stroma. So this is carcinoma in situ, and this has a much better prognosis if it is completely removed compared to invasive squamous cell carcinoma, which has the potential to metastasize. So, in summary, we have invasive islands of malignant tumor cells that have invaded through the basement membrane into the stroma of the cervix, and the cells appear moderately pleomorphic with enlarged nuclei with prominent nucleoli with scattered mitotic figures and occasional keratinized cells. We don't see any keratin pearl formation, and there is an accompanying chronic inflammatory infiltrate around the invasive islands of tumor cells. The diagnosis here is invasive squamous cell carcinoma of the uterine cervix.